Hi guys, Tracy here with another scrapbooking process video. Boy, does it ever feel good to scrapbook today. Uh, I am starting with this photo of my daughter, to both of my daughters and one of their friends. And it I changed it to black and white because it was taken in an ice rink and they're all wearing mismatched weird colors and there's weird colors in the background. And so I just changed it all to black and white. You get the effect of the hockey rink because of how they're dressed. I'm using the So In Love collection from Stampin' Up, which is very, very very different for me. I chose it specifically because it's very different from me. This, These products were sent to me by Stampin' Up, so thank you to Stampin' Up. Uh, I chose them from their album, from their catalog because they, they were so, so pretty. It almost like makes you ache they're so pretty um and uh and i just really wanted the opportunity to do something a little bit different for me and to scrapbook with some supplies that are a little bit more dainty and delicate and pretty so uh, I have already created a project with this bunch of supplies for scrapbook and cards today. It will be on their channel later on this month, but I had the supplies out and I was feeling so good to scrapbook. I hadn't scrapbooked for a while. I have been feeling a little bit unwell. And so uh, I just decided to keep on going. So I took one of the papers. This is has like a, a slight grid or like a screen pattern on it on a diagonal. This pattern paper, it's very neutral. And so I'm just using some Liquitex Basics ink and I'm brayering it on and I didn't use quite I wasn't quite generous enough with it and that's why I'm getting such a blotchy look but because the center of it will be covered up with my layers I'm not so worried about the fact that it has a blotchy look I just wanted to have that brayered back and forth look on the edges of it where it will show um, behind my project be be behind my layers and so that really doesn't look very nice but most of it is going to be covered and so my thought is that you'll see the nice edges sticking out behind my my layers now I'm taking some colored watercolored pencils and I am scribbling them all over this and the paint hasn't dried yet so when I add the water it's going to turn it like a creamy pink color that it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't on wet paint which is okay uh, and now I'm just going to dry that up and that just gives me a little bit of color on top of my white and it I did use quite a lot of water and so you see those dark spots that are forming are where the water seeped down like that what happened was the paint formed because it's acrylic paint it's basically plastic um, and so it forms a bit of a barrier for the water that I used but there were parts where the paint was so thin that it went down the water went down and it did compromise the paper you can see that streak towards the bottom there's a horizontal streak running and that is where the paper just got too wet and the fibers there are damaged and so that doesn't look very good but I'm thinking that I'll be able to probably cover it and even if I just don't cover it it looks it doesn't look that bad on a mixed media page where you know things are kind of messy anyways so I'm taking a piece of Sahara sand uh, paper is it called Sahara sand yes Sahara sand I might be calling it Sahara desert sometimes that's wrong <laughs> uh, anyhow and I'm also double matting it with a piece of black cardstock they're both from Stampin Up as well and now this is a piece of paper that I cut out. It's a chunk from the center of my mat from the layout I did for scrapbook and cards today. You will see that layout at the very end. I'm going to put them side by side because I'm planning for them to be side by side in my album. So I'm just going to show you what they look like. They both are of the same topic and with the same, with the same paper collection. So I think that they'll look nice together. I'm just tearing off strips to layer here behind my photo. And I'm using a combination of torn edges and cut edges and there's really no rhyme or reason to how I'm doing it. I'm just winging it. Some are cut, some are torn, some are not even very nicely torn and that's okay. And these are all papers from the designer series paper pack that was called so here I changed my mind I was going to make that piece be the same as all the other pieces and then I thought no I'm going to have this piece extend and that's going to hold that little extension on that piece of purpled uh, floral paper is going to hold either my title or some embellishments or some journaling or something so I, I like to do this this is one of my more standard uh, layouts is is where I have a bunch of layers behind the behind the photo and then one piece that's more either longer or taller like more of a, of a horizontal piece um, and then that piece that sticks out ends up holding something that that I need either a title or journaling or some embellishments 
So I'm doing this a little bit different. If you follow my process, you'll know that this is not usually the way I do things. I'm sticking each layer down from the bottom and outlining as I go, which is just different for me, right? There's no right or wrong way to do things. So I thought I'd do it this way for once just to show you that you can do it any, way, any which way you want. I'm outlining with my black Pentel Energel pen, which is a black gel pen. It's really bold and vivid and easy to use, so it's become my new favorite outlining tool. I also outline with a Faber Castell Pit pen sometimes, but this pen just rolls so nicely. You know, those gel pens, they're so lovely to work with. So all of those layers, I just placed them so that they were all kind of, I wanted them to all be showing over on the left hand side of my photo and it didn't matter so much on the right hand side. They, some of them kind of just disappear under the layers. Now I'm cutting some smaller pieces. These are Stampin' Dimensional adhesive and I'm just cut, cutting some smaller pieces and placing them in the layers just to hold the space and that just allows my layers to cast a bit of a soft gray shadow on each other and I, I really like that. So these are called, what are they called? Dainty doilies? No, lace doilies. They're from Stampin' Up! too and I crumple them up. I really love them all crinkled up and then flattened out and so I'm, they have a cream on one side and then white on the other side. So I'm just putting a bead of liquid glue that I'm using Tombow Mono Multi-Adhesive and just ran a bead in between my layers and then I'm just sticking the doily piece in the glue so that it'll dry in place. Doing the same thing on this side. So now I have that cute little delicate crumpled up doily sticking out on both sides of this photo and now I'm just deciding on placement on the background. I like how that pink shows. And now I'm thinking about adding an embellishment here and I'm going to make this embellishment. So there are these three dies. I use the other die in the other layout. So on this layout, I want to use one of these dies. This set of dies is called So Detailed Thinlet Dies from Stampin' Up! And it's designed to coordinate with some of the other items in this I, I think they call it a suite of products that all go together. And so these are the So Detailed Thinlets and I'm using this one that's like a band to go across a card base. And I have a stamp set that coordinates with it too. So I'm gonna use that as well. Just grabbed my Big Shot and I'm going to emboss a piece of vellum with the Falling Petals embossing folder that's also designed to go with this suite. It's called Falling Petals and uh, the petals that are falling actually look like hearts. So that's really, really pretty. And I love how it embosses on vellum. It does cut the vellum in a couple of places, but that's okay. Just adds more texture. Now I'm going to take another piece of vellum and run it through with, with a shim. And I am gonna run it through multiple times because this is a very detailed die. It is vellum, vellum is pretty easy to cut, but I just wanted to make sure that it cut. These dies are really beautiful quality dies. I have a lot of steel rule dot or not steel rule of wafer thin dies, um, but these are really nice. They're very, uh, they seem like they're made out of a thicker steel than some of the other ones that I have. Uh, I was pretty impressed anyhow. Uh, so this is the stamp set that I have to coordinate with these dies and it's called So In Love and I am going to mess up here and I'll, I'll tell you how I mess up. So I'm using stays on ink and I'm stamping with this stamp that is not a clear stamp. So it's very difficult to get it where you want it. So I'm using my Misty tool and I stamped on a piece of grid paper that I just have cut to fit in my Misty. And then I am using washi tape to stick my die cut piece. Now look, see that little edge at the bottom? That paper was not pulled down far enough. And so the paper moved and it wasn't down all the way. So my stamped image ended up stamping too far down on my die cut piece. And so I am going to do this all over again. And I don't edit my process so that you guys can see that we all make mistakes and things don't always go as planned. So here we go. I, it was quick enough to, for me to just grab my big shot again, grab another piece of vellum that was already vellum on my desk and just run that through. And now I have my Misty again. I'm just going to flip it over and I'm sorry that I'm, there you go. I was a little bit out of frame. So I'm going to restamp that 
that. Doesn't matter that I didn't get that top. I just didn't ink it right. And now I'm making absolutely sure that that paper is down in the corner. And so I am going to make sure that that grid paper that I'm stamping everything onto is flush against the bottom right hand corner. And voila, it stamped very well that time. So I'm just going to move that whole thing over instead of tidying up. I'm just going to move it all over to my staging area and I'll clean it up later. So I use stays on ink so that it would dry real quick and not smudge around on my vellum. And I'm going to use this embellishment right here and I'm going to personalize it with some sentiments inside of that little outlined shape. First, I'm going to score it so that I can easily fold it around some of the layers that are on the page already. And so I'm using my Martha Stewart scoreboard to just score two lines. And I did mark it with pencil, so I'm just going to have to erase those two little pencil marks before I do that. And now I can easily wrap it around my layers like that. Just like that. I like how that looks actually. What I really like about it is that you can still see those pretty layers peeking out behind and I, I'm so in love with this paper I really don't want to cover it all up. So I have a new roller stamp, roller phrase stamp. It's by Vicki Booten and it has some really cool fun whimsical type of, of phrases and designs on it. So I'm going to start by putting the date in the center and I already had that roller date set that roller date stamp set to that date because I had already scrapbooked a picture taken on the same day. I'm putting two ice skating picture, pictures on two separate layouts side by side in my uh, in my book. So the ones that I stamped there, one says love it and one says awesome on either side of my date. Now the whole thing is looking like it's a little bit too floaty there and I'd like to attach it down. So I'm taking my gold stapler and I'm stapling. And I'm also going to staple the two bands, like the two edges of the band down. And my stapler keeps looking like it's run out of staples, but it hasn't. So that's what I was doing there. And uh, I like how that looks. It's just such a unique little way to embellish something. Now I'm going to take that embossed piece of vellum and just put the whole put put it right behind all of my other layers so that it's just one last layer of interest between my background and all of those layers of paper. And sorry that I forgot to zoom out but what I just did now was I went and got my Liquitex Basics paint again and I'm just adding a lot more paint to my page because and I'm sorry I didn't zoom out I'm basically just doing the same thing I did at the beginning but I'm filling it all in it looks much better when you use more paint and I just needed to extend it it was clear to me that once I added all my layers onto this background that the both the right and the left sides were covering up most so there was mixed media above and below but there was no mixed media showing on either side of my layers and I really like when I have mixed media on my background I like a, at least a little bit to show on all four sides of my layers. It just feels better that way for me. That's just one of my little things. <laughs> and so this is looking much, much better to me. And also I think that using the bright white, you can st still see a little bit of the pink, but using the bright white really brightens this layout. And that is a tip that I have for any kind of dull background paper that you're using. Just add some white with a brayer and it just brightens it right up. Now I'm taking my gel pen and this is not just any gel pen. This is a Sakura souffle white gel pen and what I love about the souffle white gel pen is that it is a little bit thicker than the regular white gel pen and it puffs up it it goes on translucent and almost transparent but as it dries it deepens and gets more vividly white and so you can see those leaves that I've already outlined are much more bold and white than the leaves that I'm outlining right now and I'm just taking all of the little details of this little die cut piece and I'm just adding a white inline. So this is inlining instead of outlining. I'm going around the inside of where the die cut is shaped. 
And so there's a small border of not outlined. So <laughs> does that even make any sense? <laughs> there's a little bit of vellum on either side of my white lines is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> And so I think I've been cooped up in the house too long. <laughs> so this extra step is, it's a little bit finicky and it does take a little bit of time, but not that much time. And it's really, really worthwhile. It makes that die cut piece really pop instead of blending in quite so much with the uh, layers below it. So now I had already pulled these out for my last layout. These are some chipboard pieces from my stash and I really like this one. I believe it's from Heidi Swap, this large heart. I'm gonna cover a big part of the heart with that black bow slash butterfly. And also I have another very similar embellishment. It must also be from, I think those are from Pink Paisley. The bows and the, the arrows, they're covered in glittery black sequins, not glittery, but shiny black sequins. And I also have that little flag paper clip that's been in my stash for ages and ages, just waiting for the perfect page. And today it met its destiny and it will live on this page finally. That came in a Studio Calico kit so many years ago. I haven't belonged to Studio Calico in a long, long, long time. <laughs> so that little flag is just beaming over there saying, yay, I'm finally going to meet my destiny. <laughs> Uh, so uh, you see me here just kind of auditioning a whole lot of different embellishments. What I'm doing here is I'm looking for something with color. I feel like, man, this page needs some color. Everything is very drab. There's lots of browns and whites. And yes, the pops of black do give me the contrast that I'm looking for, but I just need some color, baby. So I am looking through my stash for something of color. It almost doesn't matter what color as long as it doesn't clash with what's already there. So I'm keeping in mind that there is that kind of purpley hue to that patterned paper with the flowers on it that the heart is upon, that big horizontal piece. So I'm kind of looking for some purples and those button embellishments really do the job. They're from Chamel and I think they they are like a button, a fake button with a wooden outside and then epoxy stickers on the inside. They're quite nice and they have some of the same shades of purple that are in the background paper, not in the background paper, but in the paper. So speaking of purple, uh, the other way that I could add, add color to my page here is by using a colored font. So I'm going to spell out the word obsession with this beautiful sticker. It's a thicker by Dear Lizzie and it is called Fantastic and it is aptly named. It reminds me of the twilight navy blue thickers that I love so much and cannot find anymore but these ones are purple. And it's a different font, but it just reminds me of it because it's a similar size. Now these ones are also from Dear Lizzie, and these ones are called Ooh La La. And I was thinking, oh, I don't know what I was thinking. Just ignore me while I make some poor design choices here. Yeah, no. No, 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 Tracy, stop! Okay, so we're going to go down this line a little ways before we decide that that's just not going to work. Uh, you know what I don't like about pink and purple together is that it's way too little girl matchy matchy. I don't know. I just don't enjoy pink and purple together. So you would think that I wouldn't try to put pink and purple together given that I know so much that I don't like it. Yet here I am looking at it and thinking, do I like that or do I not like that? I don't like that. Uh, so anyhow, I grabbed my uh, my little box that is filled with purple embellishments, except it's not filled. It has hardly any because I don't have many purple <laughs> embellishments. And I'm trying to stick them in and it's just not working for me, but hang on, it's gonna start to work. So this is, the, you know, sometimes you just have to stick with something and it will come together. So I'm liking it more now and hang on, I'm gonna think of a good idea with this there. And yeah, so what that does is it brings a little bit of color over to these edges over here and then boom, my little flag finds its forever home. Doesn't it look cute there, just sticking out? I like how it kind of goes on an angle too. It's it's lovely, I love that little flag. I've held on to that for so, so long and I haven't been hoarding it like, oh, it's too cute to use. I just haven't found the right home for it until now. 
Uh, but when you know, you know, and it does, it belongs there. So what I'm doing is changing my mind about the word new and putting that back. I just left it on the on the wax paper and just stuck it back into the thicker package. I rolled myself over to my RASCOG and grabbed some gray letter stickers and these are much much better. So the ones that I'm using, I picked a couple out there, but the ones that I'm using are called Print Shop. And they're chipboard letter stickers and they're kind of awesome. So I am going to put them so that they're centered over the word obsession. And I'm sorry that I'm too zoomed in as usual. I'm not good at remembering to zoom back out again, but I will pretty soon. I can see it ahead. So uh, I'm just kind of thinking about where... I'm going to put all of my embellishments around this and, and how many I'm going to use. So I pulled down my black thread and I use, um, what is it called? I use, I have it right here. I think it's called Coats Extra Strong Upholstery Thread. What I really love about this thread is that it's more bold than regular thread and it also holds its shape. It's a little stubborn sometimes in that it's, it only wants to make circles, but that's kind of good. I do have regular black thread on hand if I needed something more messy looking, but uh, I really like this look. So I am just, and I'm so sorry that so much of this is happening off screen, but all that I did was because that heart is a sticker, that chipboard heart, I just stuck the thread to the back of the sticker. And then I used some washi tape to hold it in place just to make sure that there was black thread poking out on all of the different edges of that heart. And that is the result right there. And now I'm going to go ahead and put the word new down and I'm just lining it up so that it it's kind of beside the layer of um of paper that's right beside it and now I did have to adhere my layers to my background paper at this point because the word obsession is going to be on the background paper so I better glue everything down before I do that so the word new is just there alongside of that layer beside it and I'm going to, at this point, because I'm afraid I'm going to forget otherwise, I'm, I'm going to glue all of these little layers that I created for this edge over here. And this is going to be my second cluster right here. And my first cluster is going to be over here on the other side of the W in new. So this heart here is going to go down and behind that doily. I wanted the doily to pop out, out and, and kind of accentuate the crinkly texture of the, of the doily. I used Tombow Mono Multi Adhesive to glue the black bow or, or I guess it is a butterfly, I keep calling it a bow, but it's constructed like a bow is constructed, but it is a butterfly. Spelling out obsession from the center out so I'm, I'm going backwards first because it, the where it lines up depends upon that layer that it's that it is underneath of. So there we go. And the N, I didn't have an N in that font, so it's just a Z sideways. And it is a little shorter because of that, but that's okay. You can't quite notice unless if I point it out. And I glued down the arrow. So now I have those two really bold black elements on this page and it picks up on the black mat and also the black and white in the photo. I added, I made sure to add a black button and I brought another black over here, but I'm actually not going to do that. It looks a little bit too heavy for this corner. And I feel like that black arrow pointing to obsession kind of counts as part of this cluster right here. So I have a little bit of purple and a little bit of black in each of my two clusters that I have so far and now I'm thinking where am I going to put my journaling I have my pen in hand ready to do it and not sure where I'm going to put it so I'm pulling out some stickers now and I think I'm going to start with a, an old set of dear Lizzie stickers if I'm not mistaken yeah these ones I think they're from her very first collection or her second collection and I like this long pink one and these are journaling stickers, but I'm going to use them more for decorations. And then this one here says, you are loved. And I thought it would look nice, right? There's a bit of space here beside the word new, but I just wanted to fill in a little bit. So I thought some word stickers would look good there. Then this one says, uh, stay classy. 
So I'm layering that above that. So I'm just basically making clusters of word stickers. This one says weekend adventures. And you can start to see the beginning of my third cluster just above the heart where those two stickers are. One is pink and one is the cream one that says stay classy. And now I'm going to insert this little journaling sticker from that same set of Dear Lizzie. So some of these are from the Dear Lizzie set and some of them on the other side in particular are from the Scraptastic Kit Club. Now I'm outlining this and I'm using my Stettler Lumo color because it's a slick surface writer and I'm writing my journaling and I really don't like it. So first of all, it's journaling for the sake of journaling. It just says at least twice a week they go to the ice rink or something like that. Um, but this this page is going right next to another page that already says something very similar to that. And so I, I just kind of felt like first I just didn't I didn't like it from a design perspective, and I also didn't think that it added very much to uh, the story that's already on the other page. And so I thought I would add this circle this half circle sticker it looks it, I mean on the one hand it adds yellow which creates a design problem for me because I'm going to need to add yellow elsewhere so what I'm doing right now is I'm looking through all of my stickers and I'm looking for a similar sized circle sticker that is not yellow ideally it would be purple but I know my chances of finding a purple circle that's exactly that size are pretty slim and I know I could make one, I probably have a stamp somewhere, a stamp medallion that I could just ink up with purple ink and cut it out or punch it out or something. But I'm really looking through my stickers because I'm, I don't know, I'm stuck on the idea of a circle. So I did come across this circle sticker, which is not exactly a circle and it's gold. And I just cut it in half and layered it behind the yellow one. And I decided I'm just going to go with the yellow sticker. I really, really like it, especially layered with that gold one behind it. So I'm going to pull some other yellow. I added another sticker, another word sticker. It says recorded up on the yellow one. And then I added another word sticker below obsession. It says forever. No, it says remember. And it's that yellow, which brings yellow into the second. So now I have yellow in two of my three clusters. And then I added another sticker that just says notes, another pink one. And that leaves me over here with this cluster that does not have yellow. So I added a button, which is a very, very soft yellow, but it's not quite yellow enough. So then I took this heart, sticker from Maggie Holmes and I stuck it on top of that purple butterfly thing and uh, I don't love that so I, there was another little heart sticker from Maggie Holmes that fit perfectly on top of that button so I like that better because it adds a little bit of pink or not of pink it adds a little bit of yellow to that side and I I think that adding leaving that heart there is too much but I do it kind of reminded me that I need something there so I took that pink heart off of the butterfly circle embellishment thing. And now that corner has a, a piece of yellow. So there's a bit of yellow in each of the corners and I'm feeling good about that. I really like it. I'm going to add a black arrow up here and it's gonna to point to something. And I'm thinking maybe I'll type a word out with my typewriter and have the arrow point to that. Thought about adding another arrow. Nope, that's just too much. Now I have these two, these three pops of black on my page. And then there's what I'm going to put on that butterfly circle that I was talking about. It's a little tiny sticker. It says love, 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 and it's black. And it sits on top of those two die cut pieces that were already layered together. So now there are three layers there. It adds quite a bit of detail over there. So that arrow is going to point to the word together, which I just took from that pink fresh studio letter sticker set there. They're, they've got like watercolor splotches all over them. And I'm going to float this one up here. It says start somewhere. And this one says I can. My kids haven't taken skating lessons and so they just are self-taught skaters and I wanted to kind of capture the idea that they're not perfect skaters, they're not the best skaters on the ice or anything, but they really have a good time skating and they're getting better and better every time they go. So that other pink letters, so along the uh, far left hand side I have stickers that say find joy in the ordinary and snapshot and also a little happy one up on the top left, uh, the top right hand corner. So all of those word stickers are spread across my three areas of embellishment. I have letter stickers, I have a pop of black, and I have 
uh, some purple and yellow in all of those corners. <clears throat> And uh, now I'm just thinking that this whole layout is looking a little bit like it's falling off the page. And what I mean is that sometimes I like a layout to not have a border around it. But when I use mixed media in particular, I really like to have a border around the outside edge of my layout. I'm just using some Tombow Mono Multi-Adhesive to put the stickers so that they are stuck on the page. Uh, so now I'm going to trim off a quarter of an inch on all four sides because my layout is already centered on the page I do have to trim a bit off of all four sides otherwise I would cut a half an inch off of two adjacent sides in order to do this if I were if I were deciding at the beginning to start with my paper a smaller size so that gives me a quarter inch edge around the outside edge of my page and I'm just trying to decide between which of these papers I would like to mat this project in and I'm going to go with that Felicity Jane the really bold one it's just the one that I had was torn it I had used it for something else so I'm going to use this fresh piece and it is this beautiful diagonal back, black and white stripe. I absolutely love it. And what I really love to do with mixed media pages is frame them up with a little something along the outside edges, either a black mat or a white mat, or ideally I love a black and white mat. And what that does is I think it just really picks up on the black that is inside of the layout and really makes it pop and pulls everything all together. And I love the boldness that it adds to the outside edge. So now the very last step is to sew all the way around the perimeter of this. I'm adding a black regular stitch all the way around and uh, you don't have to use a special needle when you're sewing on a project but your needle will get dull very quickly from sewing on paper. So if you're switching back and forth between paper and fabric you might want to use a dedicated needle just for your paper but other than other than that there's no real special technique for sewing on a layout you just do it the same way that you would sew on fabric. Although you do want to be careful to try not to sew through glue because it will gunk up the insides of your machine, which will just mean that it'll need to be serviced a little bit more frequently. So now you'll get to see the close up of this page. You can still see some of that pink from the background. It peeks out and I, I really like that layered look and I like the strong brayer look. I'm glad that I added some more white paint uh, to this page and uh, it really brightens the whole page up and gives the layers a home in which to live. Now this is the second page, the first page actually that I did today, which will be on the Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine YouTube channel later on this month, so keep an eye out for that one. It uses the same collection, but I went for a much, much more subtle look. For this page that I did today that you're watching the process video for, I stayed a lot more true to my own normal style of scrapbooking. For the, for the first one, I was doing a little bit more of just kind of trying to stretch myself outside of my comfort zone and go with a really soft, pretty delicate look. In this layout, I really focused on using bold accents to punch up this really soft, subtle collection that I'm using here by Stampin' Up. So I hope that you guys found this project helpful and fun to watch. Take care and have a really great scrappy week.